The stretching component is something that occurs throughout the set. As one progresses, as one begins to understand the movement, the stretching becomes emphasized more and more. The stretch in Tai Chi is a very complete stretch. It involves the whole body, right from the heel to the very tips of your fingers as you stretch forward. This is combined, of course, with the sitting and the turning aspect in the movement. And it's that turning component that makes the stretch so unique. Most forms of stretching are done in a linear fashion, simply flexing and extending. With, with Tai Chi, there's the flexion and extension, but also the rotational component from the turning introduced. And this rotation is introduced throughout the body. As you turn your hips, your legs are turned. As you turn your spine and stretch out with your arms, all of the upper body joints are stretched as well. Another concept is that of expansion and contraction. And you can think of this at the beginner stage of simply expanding and contracting the individual muscle groups. As you get a feel for the stretching, the joints themselves feel like they're expanding and contracting. And this is exactly what happens. The stretching action causes the joint to open up and expand as you stretch forward. And as you pull back, there's a contraction effect. I mentioned earlier about the internals. This expansion and contraction goes on as you progress deeper and deeper into the body. And you move from emphasizing the, the limbs and the more external structures to the body itself and the internal structures. And you feel as you do the weight shift, the transfer back and forth, that that expansion and contraction occurs in the abdominal region and is involved in each and every movement of the set. The fifth component that we're told and, and you hear repeated over and over again is perhaps the most difficult to grasp is that of relaxing. This is a term that makes sense at, at different levels um, as you progress in different ways. But relaxing is becoming more and more recognized that being able to relax is critical in dealing with the everyday stress that most people in our modern uh, urban environment experience. Stress can have several detrimental effects on one's physiology, and learning how to relax is the most effective way in learning how to deal with that stress. In Tai Chi, the relaxation is integrated right into the movement. By doing the movement slowly, it allows that relaxation to occur. There is a stretch response, a stretch reflex that occurs as you stretch forward and, and um, do that type of stretch slowly that allows things to relax more. Most other forms of exercise, relaxing is separated from the exercise itself, just as stretching is separated from many forms of exercise. You do your exercise and then you do your stretching, you do your exercise, then you do your relaxing. In Tai Chi, all of these are combined together in all of the movements of the set, which makes it a very complete form of exercise. I've spoken mainly of the health benefits of Tai Chi from a Western perspective. In the East, they have quite a different perspective on health and what good health means and how bad health comes about. Tai Chi is an exercise that was developed to promote good health. And in the Eastern model, ill health comes about as a result of impairments in circulation of what they call qi in the body. Qi is also known as the life force or intrinsic energy. Um, it's something that you cannot always put your finger on, but it's something that you feel as you progress in Tai Chi. There's what's called a meridian system in the body. And along that, we've all heard of acupuncture points. Along the meridians are various acupuncture points. And in the East, they believe that these acupuncture points are areas where the chi or the circulation of chi is impeded. And it's that impediment to the flow of chi that results in disease as we know it. Tai Chi as an exercise is developed to open up those areas where the chi gets blocked along the meridians and promote the flow of that circulation. We think of circulation in Western terms strictly in terms of uh, blood circulating along the circulatory system and perhaps lymphatic system as well. 
Circulation has other implications in terms of, as I was mentioning, the flow of qi. The Taoists, which Taoist Tai Chi was originally formulated by, um, developed Tai Chi in order to aid that process of the, the flow of qi in the body, and as a result, the, the promotion of good health. I mentioned relaxation earlier, and this is also comes into this in a very important way, in that the relaxation aspect of doing the movements is very much involved with the meditative aspect of doing the movements. Tai Chi is often described as a moving meditation. This extreme concentration that is required to do the set and that is developed by doing the set promotes that internal relaxation which is also very important to opening up these blockages in the qi meridians. The sitting involves transferring the weight from the front foot to the back foot. This is very important in opening and stretching the pelvic region. It's a region that's emphasized a lot in Tai Chi and for very good reason. Most of the major blood vessels, nerves, veins and arteries come down through the pelvis. By stretching open that area, you allow more room for these very important structures to function much more uh, effectively in the body. Combining the sitting, turning and stretching helps to, to promote that opening process. This Eastern conception of health and the degeneration into poor health ties in very well when we think about the aging process and exercise for seniors. It's generally well known and most seniors experience a dramatic decrease in circulation as one gets older. This is experienced as cold hands, cold feet, those type of sensations. As you practice Tai Chi and the internal development is achieved, that circulation is dramatically improved. And we've had many, many people in practicing Tai Chi experience just that. And you can think of this either in Eastern terms or Western terms, in terms of circulation of blood flow or circulation of Qi. The process of improving the circulation still involves opening up the various aspects of the body to allow that circulation to occur. And I think this is one reason why Tai Chi can be considered an ideal form of exercise for people of all ages, to prevent that aging process from occurring as rapidly as it might. The Taoists, in their quests for improved health and what they called longevity, were always looking for the answer to prolong their lives. And I think Tao-style Tai Chi is probably the best answer that they ever came up with.
with, with Tai Chi, there's the flexion and extension, but also the rotational component from the turning introduced. And this rotation is introduced throughout the body. As you turn your hips, your legs are turned. As you turn your spine and stretch out with your arms, all of the upper body joints are as you stretch forward. This is combined, of course, with the sitting and the turning aspect in the movement. And it's that turning component that makes the stretch so unique. Most forms of stretching are done in a linear fashion, simply flexing and extending. The stretching component is something that occurs throughout the set. As one progresses, as one begins to understand the movement, the stretching becomes emphasized more and more. The stretch in Tai Chi is a very complete stretch. It involves the whole body, right from the heel to the very tips of your finger, stretched as well. Another concept is that of expansion and contraction. And you can think of this at the beginner stage of simply expanding and contracting the individual muscle groups. As you get a feel for the stretching, the joints themselves feel like they're expanding.